Busters. Today, Talon and I are gonna go through an install of the Bronc bushing. We're gonna go through first the tools you'll need and the best way to get it done, the quickest way in your garage. So as you can see, we're gonna set this up, very same scenario how you're gonna do it yourselves. First, you're gonna need a few tools. You're gonna wanna have a good floor jack. You're gonna wanna have a 19 millimeter to take your, uh, take your tire off. And you're gonna want an, an 18 millimeter to uh, take the tie rod off. The next thing you're gonna want is a large crescent wrench or a 34 millimeter wrench, which is a large wrench. So easiest thing to do, have a large crescent wrench and that'll be for taking the inner tie rod. You're gonna want some pliers for removing the clamp. You're gonna want a flat screwdriver for breaking the clamp off and then also later on in, in taking the, uh, the, the black plastic keeper out. You're gonna want a couple of picks. Just something that you can get in and pull that, that piece out once you broke it. You'll want a small hammer. I recommend like a brass hammer or something. Something that uh, you can sit there and tap on some stuff without damaging it. A little bit of grease. And of course, most importantly, your install tool. If you don't have an install tool or if you've lost it, you can use a large socket to, to be able to push that in. We'll go over that later in the video. You'll want the bushing snap ring and a new clamp so all of this is included in your kit we've sent you um, we're going to go over now the process on how we do this talon why don't you go ahead and tell them what you're going to do first okay first we're going to actually jack up the tires and what we found easiest is you stick it right there and there's that bolt and a lot of times you'll just capture that why we like doing that is we've done a lot of these off road or off off on the trail and that's a place if you're on unstable ground it won't slip off the jack. So all we do is we pick it up. So the tire's up. Then we're gonna remove the tire. Of course power tools make this way more fun, but if you don't have a power tool, it just takes you a little bit longer. Then our next process is we're gonna take this tie rod off. So basically that's where you take your 18, oh, that's a different size. They're different sizes on multiple. Note, what we found is there's actually a couple different size nuts. So it is not an 18, some are 18, and I do believe some are 21 millimeters is what it is. So what do you think that one is? 21. It is not an 18, it's a 21. Okay, so here's your 21. So when, when would you see the differences, or just? It's random. It's random. random. We, we've seen it, sometimes it's an 18 millimeter, sometimes it's 21 millimeter. Okay. I don't know why. So then, you take your hammer and you tap here. It just basically breaks that bond between the two, because it actually is a tapered, so it, as it sucks tighter, it actually gets wedged in there tighter. Then what we do is we, Pop that up. Pliers first to, there's a clamp on the inside. Okay. And then let, let them show them where the clamp is back in there and where they're gonna break it. There we go. Okay. So you're gonna wanna line up right on that clamp on the inside there and give it one good solid hit. And that breaks the clamp. So you can see the clamp, all it is, you're just breaking that connection loose right there. So now we actually twist this off and you just pull and then you take that boot off. Then what you want to do is you'll have, you know, Tyler's going to do it right now, but we actually turn it all the way driver. And what that purpose is for is so we can have access to this. That's the nut on the inner tie rod that you're releasing. Okay. And all you do is you break that free. I mean, it gets tight and then you basically take this whole thing and just spin it and it'll come out. Now, an important thing to note that as your vehicle gets older and wears more, that ball actually loosens up. So you may have to take your hand in and spin that off. It may not, you know, cause this will actually get looser and looser over time. And so, so now we'll have Tyler go turn it um, passenger side. We're moving that passenger so basically that racks all the way passenger and we can access that piece to remove from factory. There's the black piece. What you'll see is you see these three holes. You got one there. What we found that's easiest to do is in between the holes, we break it in three spots. There, there, and there. 
And what that does is these are actually keepers. And so what we found is if we take the pick, we use that after it's broken and you can get your pick in there and pull them out. I've had a lot of people ask, okay, so is that the part you're actually replacing? No, that's just a, a small black piece for alignment when they're assembling the rack. It serves no purpose other than that. So we're gonna pull that out so that the new part can go in past where that is at. We go right here in between those. There's the hole right there. You find that and yeah. A twist. And you know it's popped, yeah? Yep, we know it's popped. And then I'll just take and rotate that and do the same. You're basically just trying to fish those pieces out of there just so that, uh, again, we can get in there to put the new, uh, the new bushing in. See the one side popped out? We've, we've toyed and played with uh, many ways of getting them out. If you guys come up with a better way to get them out, we're all ears. Really, this becomes the most challenging. It's not really challenging, it's just takes a little bit of time to pull that little black piece out of there. Once that's done, the whole process is relatively easy. And that's kind of how we've done it on the pick. It goes in and kind of... Gives you something to hook to and pull out, so. Yep. Now with everything pulled out, I'll go ahead and go get a bushing. Yeah, and I always just, you know, note is I always just try to, you know, I stick my finger in there, make sure there's no chunks of plastic from when you're actually breaking that. Just make sure it's a clean surface area to install the bushing. Okay, I'm gonna do this next part because Talon really doesn't like his fingers and every time he likes to hit them. So. Yeah, yeah, I broke one installing one, so I so decided. We're gonna do it the way that you're supposed to. No, I'm just kidding, yes. he does fine, but this is the way we've usually done it. Get some, a little bit of grease and, uh, and just put a little bit of grease along that, that O-ring. It just helps things go in a little bit smoother. Doesn't take a lot, okay? Now, the important thing to note, that lobe, okay? Now on that lobe, it's got a little bit of a chamfer on there. That's helped to kind of locate it in there. So again, when we go inside there, you'll see where that lobe lines up and there's some writing on the bushing. It's got some number stamped in, which is our part number, okay? So this is exactly how it's gonna go in. So I'll flip that around. You'll see it's lining up with that lobe. I flip that around and you're just eyeballing that in place. You just kind of fill it. Line up, okay? Then you're gonna take your install tool. You're gonna to put it in there and you're just gonna give it some good solid taps. I like to just kinda of have my hand out of the way so I don't do talon. Okay? And then uh, you'll hear the sound change when it bottoms out. Right now it's got that kind of just solid. Before it's a little bit hollow sound and then bam, you hit that. That means you're all the way in. Now, I've got this question a lot. Did I screw it up? I've got a little piece of rubber that came out. No, you did not screw it up. The whole purpose of that O-ring is to give us a nice tight fit going in and give it something to where it can't back out of that step. And then our final insurance to where that part won't come out is the snap ring. So take your snap ring, put it on the inside there. Just set it. Now I, I found the easiest thing to do is to take the install tool and push it in. You hear it snap. That's it. It's in place. If it's still sitting in there loose, well, you didn't go in far enough, and then you'd want to take your hammer and just kind of tap it until it goes in and seats. But in that case, it's seated. So with that done, we're going to start the reassembly process. And so Talon, go ahead and turn the steering wheel back uh, all the way driver. And I recommend, it, this just kind of helps loop things up a little bit. You can put just a little bit on that steering rack because it, it has just a teeny bit of grease from the factory. And uh, you're just kind of lubing that up a little. Okay. Now we're ready to reassemble and we're gonna let Talon do that part. So the next thing we do is we put the, reinstall the tie rod. And essentially we just line that hole up. A lot of times I just like to move that tie rod out of the way. It just gives you a little bit easier to get the thread started. And I mean, it screws on pretty easy once you do it. Do not cross thread it. Um, it should go on easy, not difficult. If it's not going on and like Talon is by hand, then you need to start over so you don't you, uh, mess up those threads. Yes, and what you can do to just verify is you stick your hand, there shouldn't be a gap between those two things. It should be, you know, pretty flush mounted. And then we'll go ahead and tighten that. Now the tighten on it, what, about two Ugga Duggas? Yeah. 
we haven't had one come apart yet, so we're doing something right. So basically what we do is we get that in there, and I just, you know, I'll move it a little, readjust the wrench, and then I just... Nice and stuff. Yeah, I just... Rail on it. And it, it's good. Then we get the clamp, and the easiest way we found... Oops, Okay, so when we install this clamp, the easiest way to do it is keeping this towards the bottom, just so we can, when we install it, the purpose is, is it makes it so when it's on and up in there, you can bring your screwdriver from up underneath and tighten that. So it, you know, we've tried other ways and it, you know, sometimes it's just in an awkward spot. So this is the way that we found that's easiest and quickest. We'll actually rotate it like this, get some thread started in it. And what we've purposely done is that clamps quite small so we don't have any tail hanging out. So now, what we'll do is you can kind of see it's seated around that boot. And we'll go ahead and I'll kind of shove this. And what we'll end up doing is we'll turn the wheel passenger again. And it's not all the way, just do a couple turns, maybe two or three turns. What that does is it gets it a little tighter right there. And what we end up doing is all you do is you rotate and it and you'll fill it once it's seated and like I said I put that clamp so it's exactly like this so then you can reach behind and just tighten it up just like that and that should be the finished outcome on that so now what we're going to do is re-put this clamp on the boot. So we just take a pair of pliers. So when we reinstall this clamp on this boot, you actually want to push that boot so it's snug. The reason why is we're going to put the buster braces on now and at this time that makes the process easier. And at this time as well, typically if we're doing both, we leave this tie rod off to put this side of the buster brace on. It just makes it a little quicker and why you have it off. If not, you know, you would then just put this back on, put your tire back on, retorque that tire to 110 foot pounds of torque. But at this current state, we're going to put buster brakes on.